did from a, if you like twice so you could have gotten like six points extra credit so on on uh, the next test test number three is going to be april 1st right april 1st so there is no class is that for me so april 1st there is no class okay it's going to be online and uh, you can take the test online and there is no makeup and uh, that will be april 1st okay so make sure that you don't miss your test online at least okay so let's keep going even though i have only three students or four students here so we, oh, oh last time we talked about mars okay and there was one thing i forgot to play they have recorded the the noise on mars okay the wind so there is not much atmosphere but that's enough that you can hear the noise here Okay, so today we're going to talk about the giant planets. Okay, so we have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Yes, and then you sign in as well. That's for extra credit. Okay, so they are more. They have more mass than the Earth, but they don't have that much uh, density. So they are not as dense. So most of the giant planets, they're going to have a solid core. And then they have metallic uh, hydrogen inside. And then on the other side, they're going to have an atmosphere. So metallic atmosphere here, it means that the hydrogen in is in the metallic state which means that the electrons, because of the pressure, so the pressure is so, so large, and the temperature is low enough that the hydrogen will behave like a metal. Okay, so that means the, hy the hydrogen will have electrons that are free to move, like um, they can be on their conduction band. So what it means, it means like it's moving, and because it's moving, uh, it's going to produce, it's going to generate a magnetic field, okay, like, like, like we have on Earth. Except for the Earth, it's inside the outer core. You have iron, okay, that have been ionized. And because it's moving, the Earth is behaving like a huge electromagnet. So it generates a magnetic field that will protect us against the solar wind. That can be very harmful. So those giant planets, it's the same idea. So they have some kind of dynamo inside that would generate a magnetic field. What you see here, it's called the red, uh, the red eye. It's it's actually a giant, giant storm. Okay. So Jupiter, three hundred times the mass of the Earth, and if you were to paste cut and paste the earth here you will put 10 earth across jupiter and you can put 10 jupiter across the sun just to give you an idea of scales did you put your name here did you sign in everyone you sign in you put your name here okay that's it that's for extra credit so 
By the way, April 1st, it's going to be the test number three. It's going to be online. So that day you do not come to class and you take test number three online. So Jupiter has uh, many moons, but the most famous ones are called the Galilean moons because they were observed by Galileo using his newly improved telescope. Okay, so he, Galileo was really the first one to turn that telescope to the heaven, and he was able to observe those four moons. So are you, are you here? It's a very famous moon because it has volcanoes, lava flowing, and then Europa, also very famous. It has a layer of ice, soft ice. And then this one, Callisto, far away, it's all ice. So it's like an ice ball. Okay. So again, here, if you look at Jupiter, you have this here. It's called the red the great red spot. So if I ask you, you know, what is it? It's a storm. It's like wind, always. It's a constant storm, ne never come down. Okay, it's like 300 years old storm, never stop. So you have the four Galilean moor that I was talking about. Okay, so you can see them here. You see here, this is um, Europa, Io, Okay, the next planet. So Jupiter is like the big bully because it's so, so, it, it's the largest, it has the largest mass. So it's constantly chugging on anything it can. So we think that that's why between Mars and Jupiter, you, you were supposed to have a planet. Okay, you have all those little debris that were supposed to come together, coalesce and make a planet, maybe like the moon, a little, a little bit, bit uh, smaller than the moon, but it didn't happen because Jupiter is constantly chugging and pulling, okay? So Jupiter can be a great help for us because if you have something that wants to hit the Earth, it can be deflected because of Jupiter. Or it can do the opposite, right? It can deflect something toward the Earth. And then you have Saturn with those beautiful rings, also, it was seen by Galileo, I don't know if you remember, in his uh, notebook, he, he, he was able to draw, to draw Saturn. You could not see the ring, but you could see like handles on the side, like ears, right? So that would be for Saturn. Uh, you have a spacecraft here, very famous, 2004. It, uh, it was called Cassini and it orbits Saturn here, and even went to Titan. Okay, so he had another spacecraft, Regans, that went to Titan to investigate the surface of Titan. So this is a beautiful picture, how amazing it is. So if you have a good pair of binoculars, remember, you could see Saturn, and, but to see the moon is a little bit harder. But with a good pair of binoculars, you can see Saturn because a good pair of binoculars is just two telescopes, and it will be as uh, it will have as much resolution as the telescope used by Gal Galileo, right? So the rings, okay, it's not like a solid, continuous ring. It's made of little chunks here, ice and rocks, and the they, stay, they, they could not be a moon again because Jupiter is constantly tugging. So all those little pieces, they could not get together and make a moon, okay? So it's just, it's just a ring. Okay, so that's what you have inside. Here you have enough pressure, okay, to, to have something solid. And then you have metallic hydrogen. That means it behaves like a metal, okay? So it's a... It's spinning and it's generate that uh, magnetic field. And then you have some gas here, layer of gas. So they are the giant planet. So 2004 was very interesting because we have reached uh, Saturn here. And the way they do it, for those who are interested, is called the slingshot effect. So because if you go from the Earth, where is the Earth? The Earth is here. If you, if you go from the Earth straight to Saturn, it will take 
too much fuel, too much energy. Instead of that, they use a principle called conservation of momentum. So it passed by Venus. Okay, so the spacecraft pulls on Venus. So Venus pulls back because for every action, you have a reaction. The consequence is not the same. So if you push someone, okay, that's someone that does not react, you will be pushed back whether that person wants it or not. That means you cannot push without being pushed and you cannot push harder than you are being pushed. And you cannot push harder than uh, uh, you, uh, you are being pushed. So it means that each time it passes by Venus, Venus is pulling on it, okay? So you are using like free energy from the pool from Venus. So you are using gravity, okay? So it's like um, you are assisted by gravity. So it's gaining momentum each time it's passing by Venus. So you zoom a little bit faster, zoom a little bit faster, zoom a little bit faster. And once it's fast enough, okay, it has enough momentum, it's going to reach Saturn. So you can imagine all the computations that you have to do way, way uh, ahead to reach that goal. So if I ask you, you know, for a test or conceptual question, they are all conceptual questions, by the way, almost all. So it's called the slingshot effect, okay? So you use conservation of momentum. Now the spacecraft is also pulling on Venus, but Venus has so much mass that the effect is nothing. That you are not going to send Venus anywhere, okay? Any question? And then you have Uranus. So Uranus is very interested because it's totally tilted. So it's rolling on, on its side like this, right? So it's like rolling. Okay, Be because uh, maybe it was uh, kicked a long time ago when the solar system was formed. So if you remember, Uranus was discovered by William Herschel. We talked about him and his sister Caroline in 1781. So the patron of William Herschel was the king of England. He was a King George. So I don't know which one, maybe the fifth. I don't know. For that, you have to check because I don't remember. But it was a King George who gave him money so he could build the largest uh, telescope at the time. So he named the planet after King George. So I think it was called the Georgian Star. And then they changed the name because they said, oh, it's not appropriate to be named after the king of England for some reason. So they changed the name later to Uranus. So to go around, it takes 84 years, terrestrial years. Of course, we take one year to go around the sun. And Uranus, it takes, of course, it's farther away. As you move away from the sun, the period, the time for one revolution is going to increase. Does this make sense? It's also very cold because it's so far away from the sun. Any question? So that will be Uranus. You see, it also has some ring. And you see how it's being, instead of being, um, instead of the equator here, so that will be the axis of rotation is instead of having its uh, ring in the plane of uh, the solar system, it's totally tilted. So it's rolling on its side. And then not long ago, so I forgot when it happened, but they found out that Uranus had rings as well. So it's interesting the way they discovered that. So it's called transition. So, for example, if you are here, this is the Earth, and you are looking at Uranus, so both the Earth and Uranus, of course, goes around the Sun, and then very, very, very far away in the background, you have stars. Are you paying attention or you are on your phone? So the background, very far away, you have stars. So when Uranus is moving, you see, from our perspective, it's, it's going to go in front of the star. So we are not going to see the star, okay? It's called transition because Uranus is just in front of the star. So we're going to see that. We're going to see 
the brightness or, or the light from the sun constant, and all of a sudden yeah, there is a dip. That dip, of course, depends on, on the size of Uranus. But instead of observing this, they observe that. You have all those little dip. And that's because Uranus has rings, but they are very, 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 very thin. They don't spread out. So that's how they discover that it had rings. Okay, did, you, did you all sign in and put your name on my paper? Someone who are late. What's your name? Miguel. Okay, so you see the ring are very thin. And this is because, and I like that term, uh, what is called shepherd moods. You know, she, like you have shepherd dogs that keep the sheep uh, in the pack together. Likewise, here you have two moons. And because this one is tugging and that one is tugging, so it keeps the ring very thin. So that's why it took a while to find out about those rings. And, and that was found, okay, it was observed later, 1986, and they are called tapered moons. I like that term. Okay, so you can see Uranus relative to the Earth. And the structure here, you always have here a solid core. And then because of the pressure here, uh, here it's going to be more gases here. That's an ugly moon of Uranus. It looks like a death star. And then the last one is Neptune. Okay, it was discovered in 1846, and it has this beautiful blue. Okay, that's because of the methane atmosphere that you have. So it has a deep blue. So maybe that's why it was named after the king of uh, the ocean, Neptune. Okay, so here you have what it's uh, the, the configuration inside. So you have a core here, solid core ice, rock, and this is all gases. So the composition will change. You know, if it's liquid or gases, or if it's solid, it changes from one planet to the other, okay? It also has some moon, including a moon named Triton. So you can, uh, if you are interested, you can dig more into that planet and then we get to the sad story okay pluto pluto was a planet until very recently 2006 2006 okay it was discovered in 19 uh, let me tell you 1930 okay 1930 they discovered pluto so we used to have nine planets and then they did uh, something terrible, 2006, they demoted Pluto. And I told you they did it uh, during the summer when everyone was on vacation. There was a committee, but it was a few people, very small group of people who decided to demote Pluto. It's, I think that's stupid, that's my opinion, because uh, it has been a planet for so many years. I don't see why it had to be demoted, changing the history. So, and, and then it doesn't even make sense because they said, oh, okay, it's spherical, check, so it could be a planet, okay, it orbits the sun, okay, check, could be a planet, but they say Pluto didn't clear out its uh, orbit, so it means you have other junks orbiting with Pluto around the sun, but guess what, this is also the case of Jupiter. Okay, we're going to see Jupiter also didn't clear out its orbit. Okay, you have asteroid orbiting with Jupiter. So on the same orbit. So, I don't know, it happened. Um, you see Pluto sometimes, of course, it's going to chill out in the Kuiper belt. Remember the Kuiper belt, it has like a donut plate. Okay, so it's flat, belongs to the... Uh, on elliptic plane, okay? And then farther away, you have the Oort cloud. So it hangs out here 
with uh, the Kuiper belt. So Tommy left, right? Did you see? He always lives in the middle. Did appear? Okay. So the, but you see here at some point it's getting closer to the sun than Neptune itself. So that's also interesting. By the way, it's um, it's Pluto who who was named after the planet and not the planet that was named after Pluto. So it has an inclined orbit, okay? And uh, we, we have some uh, picture because in 2015, there was a spacecraft named New Horizons that reached Pluto here, and it has a moon. So the moon of Pluto is quite big, so that's why sometimes we talk about a double double planet system. Okay, the name is uh, named Sharon. Anyone um, took uh, mythology? Do you know Sharon? It's a character, but I forgot. I'm I'm not sure. Okay, and we we'll find out for next time. So 2006, the poor Pluto was demoted from planet hood to dwarf planet. And when you say dwarf planet, dwarf is not the adjective. It doesn't mean small like dwarf. No, it's a noun. So it's a double noun. Dwarf planet. So it's like you 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 add to to the insult, right? So why why did that happen? It's because um, they found another object okay in the Kuiper belt named Eris and it's about the same size of Pluto so they start to argue if we keep finding stuff you know in the Kuiper belt and those stuff look like planets we are not going to increase the number of planets like keep keep increasing the number of planets so they decided to demote Pluto which in my opinion it's not really fair so interestingly, Eris was discovered in 2005, and first it was named a planet. Okay, so the one, uh, the physicist, I forgot his name, who uh, discovered Eris. Okay, he had discovered the tenth planet, and then Eris and Pluto with it were demoted to be a dwarf planet. Dwarf planet. So Eris now is a dwarf planet. So you are very young, so I don't know if you remember, you, you cannot remember, but I don't know if you know that show. Uh, there was a show with uh, Xena, and uh, she was a warrior. So it was like, um, uh, um, it's, it's, it's uh, what it's called. Uh, okay, so she was a warrior with a um, sword and she had a kick, kick side, sidekick named Gabriella. So first, when they, um, they name uh, the, the 10th planet, they name it Xena and Gabriella for the moon, because it has a moon here. And then, I don't know, maybe they didn't like that series, or it was controversial for some reason at the time. Uh, go figure. So they changed the name to Eris and Dysnomia. And these are gods or goddess of cow because it became very controversial and very chaotic. So maybe that's why we changed the name. I do not know. So that's for the story. And then they keep finding other stuff in the Kuiper belt and they give them name. So this one is interesting because it has like an egg shape. So that's the story. Have you heard about Xena and Gabriella? No, it's an old show. It's uh, very famous for those who like that. It's, let's see. Zena. I think they did the comic book. It was a very popular show. So I forgot, uh, maybe in the 80s, I forgot. 1995? She was a warrior princess. So anyway, it's a very famous show. I have to check uh, the year. 
Okay, so don't go and uh, believe whatever it says in the tablet. Of course, Pluto and Uranus are missing. No, no, no one abducted Pluto. It was just uh, sadly devoted. Okay, and then I don't go into too much details because you have another class to learn about those um, planets more in details. But you also have asteroid. So asteroids are between Jupiter and Mars, and they were supposed to be a planet, okay? But because of the tug from uh, Jupiter, that didn't happen, okay? So you see here the asteroid between Mars and Jupiter, and guess what? You see that Jupiter is not alone on its orbit. It's sharing its orbit with two groups of asteroid so one group is called the greek and the other group is called the trojans because you know you have uh, trojans and greek and they didn't really <laughs> like each other and uh, so that's why it's called uh, that way and they are always making a 60 degrees angle so if you make a uh, angle here you see a sector that will be 60 degrees so you see unfair Okay, Jupiter didn't clear out its orbit. Jupiter, okay, so you're going to demote Jupiter as well to a dwarf planet. So anyway, um, so the first asteroid discovered, so it's the biggest, the largest. That's why it was easy to spot at the time, 1801. Ceres, that's the name, okay. So first they thought, here we have a 10th planet, and then they keep finding other asteroids as well. So it was demoted to asteroid. Asteroid means minor planets. And recently, when Pluto was demoted to be a dwarf planet, Ceres was promoted. Okay? <laughs> it was promoted to be from an asteroid, it became a dwarf planet. Okay, so you have asteroid, and then dwarf planet, and then planet hood. <laughs> so 2021, um, uh, I, th I think it's already, so that I put that uh, my slide, so it already happened. You have a spacecraft named Lucy that came to visit those asteroids because they can teach us a lot. Um, about the formation of the solar system. Here is an interesting one. Isn't that a cute one here? It looks like a potato, okay? And uh, it has a small moon here, a tiny itty bitty moon, a very cutie here that orbit the asteroid. So the asteroids are not static, okay? They, they rotate about an axis and sometimes they have a moon on their own, okay? Um, this one here, it was uh, very closely the first one that we got uh, close to, okay, 1991. It was visited by the Galileo spacecraft. And you have another one with a very nice name. Its name is Mathilde. Okay, I, I hope I say it right. So I say it the French way, Mathilde. Okay, and um, it has a rotation period of 4 to 15 hours, so very, very long rotation time, and it doesn't reflect much light, so it's uh, very dark, so it absorbs all the light from the sun. Okay, and then that, I don't know if you know that, because a few uh, people know, but you, you don't have just asteroid between Mars and Jupiter, you have a group of asteroids that are named the centaurs. So I, I'm sure you know what centaurs, right? They were like half men and half horse, and they like to pull jokes on humans, except one that was nice, but uh, they are very mischief. Okay, they like to, to make jokes. Um, not very uh, politically correct, those centaurs. So all those group here, this group of centaurs, asteroids, they, they are between Neptune and Jupiter. And they are all named after centaurs, okay, the Greek centaurs. So this one is Asbolus, so I don't have no idea uh, 
if it was a nice center or not. So those those asteroids here, you see how it's tilted relative to the plane, elliptical plane, and they are very unstable. So sometimes you can have a center, you know, off orbit and hitting us. Okay, so they did have this mission, DART. Okay, so I don't know if you watched the movie, Ar Armageddon, Armageddon, that was the name. Have you watched that movie? No, it was very famous with Bruce Willis. It's very sad what happened to him. Um, but you, it's a very, I don't think it's that old, I'm sure. I think it's a couple of years ago. So anyway, in that movie, um, there is an asteroid uh, that wants to hit the Earth, or um, and then the mission of um, Bruce Willis is to deflect that asteroid so it doesn't hit the Earth. So they, they kind of did the same thing in 2022. So they sent a spacecraft with a projectile, okay, and they 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 were able to hit an asteroid to deflect to deflect its trajectory because there are many things we can do but if an asteroid is targeting us actually there is not much we can do even even deflecting the asteroid you know i don't think it will work very well we're going to see why in another unit but at least they, they did deflect it a little bit, right? So that was the name of the asteroid. So I think I have a movie, uh, a small video about DART. Let's see if I have a picture here. Um, Dimorphos, right? So let's see the movie. Okay, so they, they did send a projectile um, uh, the moon. So they were aiming at the moon of that asteroid. And uh, it was the first time that they were able to change the motion of an object in space. And and it did, it did work, okay? So if you look at the technology, it was amazing that the, for the first time we were able to do that. So what do we call a meteorite? Meteorite is one, you have a piece of rock reaching the Earth. So it could be a comet that was deflected from its orbit, or it could be an asteroid, for example. That's what a, me a meteorite is, okay? So most, most of the meteorite, because, because the Earth has an atmosphere, it will evaporate in the atmosphere. So that's why you have, um, like a, a trail, okay, a, a meteor, meteor trail, because all the meteorite will be destroyed into the atmosphere because of the friction. Okay, so it's called sublimation. All all the solid part of the meteorite will evaporate. So we are very lucky to have an atmosphere to protect us against those meteorites. Now, if you have a meteorite that is so 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 big. Okay, even though it's going to start evaporating away, it still hit the Earth. So that's what happened 65 million years ago. 
the meteorite wiped out everything. Not only the dinosaurs, but anything alive. But very few things were able to uh, survive. So it does, does happen that a, mer a meteorite make it to the Earth. So for example, here it happened in 1954. This lady here is the first uh, human being uh, being hit by meteorite. So I don't know if that uh, is included in her insurance. So you know what the odds that you are being hurt by a meteorite. So, but maybe 1954, you know, insurance were not that uh, expensive as today. I don't know. So 2003, here you have another example. So if you co if you have that hitting your uh, house, so maybe you can donate it to a science museum or you can sell it on eBay or whatever. They are quite ex expensive, okay? The largest ones are very, very expensive. So he, here, that pictures, that picture comes from the Natural Science Museum in uh, New York City. So you can, you can even touch it. It's like metallic. So you have two kinds of meteorites. The one that are primitive are the most interesting because they were formed back, you know, when the, the solar system was in formation. So 4.6 billion years ago. Other one, they are uh, processed. Okay, so I'm not going to go into details. Okay, otherwise I'm going to lose everyone. Okay, so now you could have, so a meteorite does not have to be only asteroid or comet. It could be also pieces coming from the moon and from Mars. Okay, so it's a very cheap way to acquire meteorite. And the best way to find them is to go in Antarctica because it's so dry that it will be kept. And, and of course, it's all white, so you can... Uh, you can spot them, okay? So the, the one, I don't know if you remember, the one that um, came from Mars and people thought you, you could see bacteria like tube, like little tube, like, Bacteria, they, this, this one was found in Antarctica and it came from Mars. Okay, and then you have comets. Okay, so the comets are actually like dirty snowball. And um, I think I have a picture, the, the oldest picture that we have of a comet here, it, it was in 1530. Okay, so it's a German, uh, German scientist here. And it was amazing drawing because you could see that the tail of the comet always has to be away from the sun. Okay, so a comet does not have a tail until it's going to be close to the sun. Okay, when it's going to get close to the sun, it's going to be destroyed a bit. Okay, it's going to start to evaporate and it's going to form a tail made of dust and plasma. And because the sun generates a, a wind, okay, a solar wind, all those little particles here, so it's going to exert a radiation pressure, so it's going to push the tail away. So this drawing is very famous. If you're interested in history, you can uh, look up that name here. So it was from uh, Germany. So a comet can come from the Kuiper belt, okay? So like heli comet. So in that case, it will take a few hundred years to come visit. Or they can come from the Oort cloud. So in that case, it can take thousands of years. So if they come from the Oort cloud, maybe they visit once and then they're going to be deflected by something and they don't come back. Okay, so they can just visit once, hey, how are you doing? And then they never come back. Heli comet comes every 76 years. So each time a comet is close to the sun, it's going to be destroyed a little bit. Okay, it's going to lose some of junk. Okay, and those junk stays, stay in orbit with, with the original comet. So here you have a beautiful 
picture of a comet. You see it has a tail and comet means but the name it's because in Greek it means long hair because it looks like hair, long hair, you know. Okay, so they can come either from the Kuiper belt. So in that case, it takes a few hundred years to come to visit, or they can come from the Oort cloud. So this junk here, they don't. So the in the Kuiper belt, you know, everything orbits counterclockwise. In the Oort cloud, it's like random motion. So if if it comes from the Oort cloud, it does not have to to come back. Okay, are you still with me? I didn't lose anyone. <laughs> Anatomy of a comet. So you, you see here, you have the core of the comet and you have the tail. So the tail is mainly, um, you, you have two parts. You have a dust tail and the plasma tail. And this here is called the nucleus. So the nucleus of a comet, so it's like a dirty snowball. That's what they call it. Okay, so again, typical question on test number three. When the comet is far away from the sun, it's just the nucleus. And then when it gets close to the sun, it starts to evaporate here, yeah, and the solar wind is pushing away. So pushing away, so you have the plasma, and you have the dust. So you have the tail, you have made of the dust and the plasma. This is because of the photons pushing the dust away and the radiation pressure pushing the plasma away. Plasma means charged particles. So that's what it looks like. You see far away, you just have the dirty snowball. So beautiful picture. So this one, we're gonna talk about that one because something happened in 1995, a terrible thing happened. I can tell you now what happened in 1995 because of that comet. That comet was named a uh, Heli Bob. So you're not going to see it again because it has a period of 2,533 years. Okay. You have 1975, the West Comet. Okay. So 558,000 years, so I'm not going to see it any, any time soon. This one, 100,000 years, so no way will be dead unless they found a way to uh, save us, I mean, I don't know, uh, in the USB key or something. So this one, 1,600 years. So just want to tell you the story, okay? So I don't uh, pay attention what happened in Helibo. So Helibob, there was a disaster, 1995. So the new Heli comet will come visit. And there was a sect in uh, California. So I'm I forgot where it was. And California, let me find it. Okay, Santa Fe. So this, um, there was a, it, it was a sect. And that was the, the one in charge of the sect. So the sect was named, it has a name. Uh, oh, oh yes, the Heaven Gate, Heaven Gate sect. So he had followers and his uh, story is very interesting. If you are in psychology, you know, definitely this guy was a psychopath. His name was Marshall Alper White. And he's, he, convinced, he convinced his follower that Behind the comet, you has you had like a space spacecraft alien with alien inside, so extraterrestrial life, and those aliens were in charge to take people to heaven, straight to heaven. So that's why the 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 gate, the the name of the gate of the sect, so is called a heaven gate. So he convinced his followers that if they all commit suicide, okay. At the right time, when the comet was about to be very close to the Earth, then there will be like a spacecraft, you know, UFO, that will take them, all the people who committed suicide, to heaven. And, and they did. So they were uh, dressed in white. I think what they did, they, 
the I think they, they did some poison. They drink they were drinking some poison and and they all died. And I don't know if they went to heaven or not, but that's very um interesting that it takes just one person, very convincing person, to convince like uh, tens of people to commit suicide to go to heaven. Uh, I don't know, it was called mass uh, family guy. Um, there is one episode where they refer to that story, Haley Bob's story with uh, this guy. So it was the story of, uh, what's her name? Megan? Her name is Megan. Megan, you know, she doesn't feel the love of her dad. So she joined the sect. She had a friend and uh, and they were all dressed the same way and they were about to drink here the poison. Um, and that's the leader. And, and then the dad come and save Megan and everyone else died. So I thought it was an interesting story because um, I, I didn't know at the time, but they were referring to that story here. Halibo. Uh, that happened in 1996. So if you are interested, you can look it up. So what you see here is that when a comet come visit at a point, at some point, you see its orbit, it's going to cross the orbit of the Earth. So when that happens, we're going to have a meteor shower. That's what a meteor shower is. So like, for example, every November, mid-November, you have a comet here, name is Temple Turtle, and it's crossing our orbit, not only the comet, but all those little junk here. So it starts to rain on Earth. So most of the pieces will burn into the atmosphere. That's when you get a meteor shower. And this seems to come from the constellation Lion, that's why this meteor shower is called a Leonid. And every 33 years, we get more junk, okay, hitting the Earth, okay, reaching the Earth. So that's an event not, uh, not to miss. So here I have a website with all the list of the showers. Isn't that interesting? And of course, remember Heli Comet? Okay, it was the first time, for the first time, it was re reported on a tapestry okay, that tell, that tell the invasion of England by a French uh, duke. It was, I think it was Duke of Normandy, William the Conqueror. So he crossed the channel, he invaded England, he defeated the king of England at a very famous battle called Has Hasting, Hasting uh, Battle, and he became the King of England. The King of England, his name was Harold here. And they all saw that comet, and they thought it was good omen for the French and bad omen for the British. Okay, so it's a long st story, like long time ago. We are in the early Middle Age, so heli, heli comet. And then it was understood by Edmund Halley that that comet comes back every 76 years. So it comes from the Kuiper Belt. So it comes to visit. I will be dead when they come back. Um, I think it's coming back in 2061, but you should be around. Okay. Right now it's really, really far away. Last time it was 1985. Carl goes here. So it's very, very far away almost reaching Pluto orbit, and then it's coming back in 2061. Cut. Uh, no, I will be dead. You will be alive. 